Hey everyone, little Nino here will hopefully be a somewhat detailed tutorial for the item before Flogger Wall Crawl. I'm basically making this under the assumption that you'll be wanting to use this in the speedrun, so don't expect me to explain basic movement techniques such as L jumping, get out jumping, and out of bounds movement, because I would hope that you're at least somewhat familiar with them if you want to use this in the speedrun. Um, but basically, you don't start at the bottom of the room in a speedrun. I'm coming coming from the save station because it makes it more convenient for me and recording. Um, in a speedrun, you'll be coming from this way because you do this wall crawl after getting the wall crawl bombs, so you'll be coming this way. First, you'll want to jump to this branch. It's just jump to it. The collision is a lot more forgiving than it looks. It's just jump to it and you'll make it. Um, then you want to jump to this um, ledge over here. Jump to it, really easy. Um, and next is probably the hardest part of the entire wall crawl, simply getting out of bounds. You basically want to do a ghetto jump off of this slope in order to get out of bounds here. Because to do this, you basically need to get a, a good ghetto jump, and then make sure you spaceship at the apex of your first jump so that you don't waste any height. And it's a lot harder than it looks, and this actually gets a lot of new runners because it's just really obnoxious. You can see that even I'm messing this up, and I actually speedrun this game regularly. There we go. That took way too many tries, but that's the gist of it. But that gives you an idea of how hard this is that I had trouble with this when I'm trying to make a tutorial. But anyway, um, when you get out of bounds, you will land in the ether at around this height. How high you are will just depend on how fast you're moving forward when you get out of bounds. Um, from here, you'll just want to move left. And then from here, just move straight forward to land there. The landable spot is very large. It's just move forward and you'll land here. If you somehow move too far to the right, um, you'll get stuck in the wall like this. Um, in order to fix this, just let go of the stick and hold L. And then the game will at least try to relocate you to a standable spot. Um, I say try because it doesn't always succeed, but for cases like that where you're stuck on the wall, it'll usually succeed. Um, from here, you want to jump to this ledge right here, because there's a standable spot here. From here, you want to jump to the door. The jump under the door is a little weird because you're kind of like shooting yourself in between both a horizontal and a vertical gap. So you just kind of have to get the feel for it before or you can do it consistently, really. But it's not really too bad. That applies to basically everything in this entire wall crawl. It's just, once you get used to it, it's not that bad. Except for the ghetto jump. Screw that ghetto jump. But anyway, from here, uh, what you do is you basically need to um, jump on top of right here while also transitioning in the same jump. And what you can do is you can either go forwards or backwards. I personally go backwards, so I'll show going backwards. Um, if you're going backwards, you basically just hold down and then down left a tiny bit so that you will jump backwards and then while moving left a tiny bit so that you'll transition. Um, and then you immediately hold forward and space jump so that you'll go over on top. Like so. Going forward is the exact same thing but reversed instead of... So you'll be doing forward and then left a tiny bit instead of down and then left a tiny bit. It's the exact same process. Um, from getting to the next door... Um, all you have to do is just, you can do two things if you're getting across here. You can either, there's a little branch across there that's poking through the ceiling that you can use as a bit of a guide for where to jump to. Um, you just simply just jump and then jump. You want to time your spaceship a little later than usual because if you space jump too early, you'll get enough height to actually put you to the skywalk. And you'll want to land around here. If you actually miss the standable spot and you land, say, here where you can't move, just simply morph while bomb yourself and unmorph, and use the unmorph to relocate yourself. And then from here, you just jump straight to the door, just like so. Um, you want to probably space up a little late here as well, just so that you um, actually get enough distance need to get to the door. Um, the other way of getting to the door from there is to basically do this, actually. Um, but I'm going to show it from the beginning just so that you get a good idea of what you need to do in context. Um, Simply just jump, space jump, and you're at the skywalk. And then, once you get to the door, just simply morph ball, and you'll fall to the door. Um, from here, the next room is a little weird. Because 
you need to get enough height or actually get yourself into the skywalk um but the thing is it's the skywalk is low enough to where you can get to it within a single double jump but um if you waste even a tiny bit of height you'll probably be in the room so that you will basically fall on top of the room ceiling and the best way to avoid that i found is to basically just tap up a tiny bit to transition and then immediately space jump or jump and then space jump you space jump at the apex of your first jump then at the apex of your space jump you tap left again so that you get into the skywalk i didn't transition lovely like so and usually that works see like so it worked um if you you can alternatively there's another there's other ways of doing this um alternatively you can uh, jump onto the this and then jump like so that also, that also gets you to the skywalk but it's a little slower because you add an extra jump or two into the mix um i guess i might as well show what goes on if you waste height just so you know how to fix it if it happens to you it's pretty obvious what to do since i showed it what to recover from in the last room basically if you are too low you will kind of do this where you just get stuck in the ceiling to fix that you just bomb and you'll get to the skywalk and then you go over here to the door room's already doesn't already low there's no word by hitting low triggers for here just get on top of this door and to transition you just tap left and then jump over here most of this general spot is standable um a lot of runners like to get here um but i personally just go with whatever works um i will just get over here just for the sake of demonstration purposes so just find something that works for you really that's how a lot of stuff in this game works find what works for you i am just kind of a guy to lead you in the right direction for the most part um from here you will want to jump onto this wall like so and then you will want to go all the way over here and possibly the most complicated part of this entire walk for new runners is doing this transition correctly because on the right side of the door there's a little trigger that'll load an incorrect um set of low triggers in this room and which means in order to load furnace, you have to hit the, the different load triggers, which are a different spot. Um, this catches a lot of new runners who don't know about it because they don't know how to fix it. And the way to fix it is to simply avoid it in the first place. But I will also show how to actually fix it and where the new load triggers are if this happens to you. And also an extra alternative that always works um, should you not want to deal with the load triggers in the first place. First of all, you want to jump to the low trigger, which is right about here, and then jump onto this door before the room is finished loading. And let's go ahead and miss it. How oh, nice. I missed the standable spot. Um, I just jumped higher than I needed to, so that I jumped over the trigger. Um, but if you're not an idiot like me, you'll just simply jump and then jump onto this door. Um, before it loads and um, from here you just pepper shut the door to make sure it's done loading and because basically when a room is loading or loaded rather the collision will be there but the textures just aren't visible until you actually go to the room so from here once the room is done loading you just transition by holding forward and jumping forward and then from here um, you need to the easiest way to get to the skywalk from here is because uh, basically this room's ether meets with this room's ether at about here or so. Uh, so you, to get to the skywalk, you just jump forward like this. Um, and this load trigger is weird to explain. Basically, imagine a square that's around here and is poking its corners at outside of the tubes that are around here and here. This is where the load trigger is. You basically want to aim for those corners of that square with wall and morph ball. Oh my god, I think. Yep. I bounced off the two. That's not an issue really, actually. Um, to get if this happens to you, actually this is a good um, time to explain this. If this happens, you see how I'm kind of bouncing in the floor? Um basically you need to do an ether jump from the floor, and you need to jump as you bop up. 
best way to do this is just to mash B, and you'll eventually get a jump. And from here, you just kind of go here. I went back down on, the, on top of the tube. Let's actually get a bomb jump. There we go. And the room's loaded. From here, you just kind of want to line up at a, around this, and then you'll just move forward. See how my arm cannon bobbed a bit? That means you're at probably where you need to be. From here, you just jump, space jump, tap forward to get on this pole thing. Jump, space jump, tap forward again to get on here. Okay, here's the part where I try to explain what goes wrong, what happens, or rather, if you transition to West Furnace Access incorrectly. Basically what happens is there's a load trigger on near the right side of that door, where if you hit it, um, as you before you transition, the thing is what it is. I don't quite know how it works, but I think it's before you, it's either before you or as you transition, where it'll load a different set of load triggers for that room, which makes loading Furnace itself a lot harder if you don't know where to where to go to do it and well what happens is basically the way the most easy way to avoid it is to simply get on top of the door before the room loads like i showed um and because what causes it most easily is if you transition after the room is loaded and if i'll show i'll jump onto the load trigger here and the room will load it's already loaded see and then I will sort of transition like so, as if the room's already been loaded. I'm stuck, hold on. And then, assuming I did that correctly, it'll have loaded the wrong load triggers. Yeah, it didn't load the room. See? It didn't load the room. So, if that happens, um, obviously the best way to avoid that is to simply just do what I showed in the main video. Um, but if this happens to you regardless, or if you don't do what I did and that happens to you, the low trigger is actually right here. Come on. See, you'll know that you hit it if, um, energy core unloads, and that's that. There's also an alternative where if that happens, well, either if that happens or you just simply can't figure out where that low trigger is if you do it normally anyway um, You can alternatively just shoot the door and morph to fall next to it Which will forcibly load the room. I don't know if it'll um, do it correctly since I've already loaded the room um, But the way you'll know that you've loaded the room is if the do door turns blue again like so and from there, you have to either jump on top of this tube from here. And what you do from that is just you wait until the can't, you just hold L and wait until it's bobbing you up like this. You can just like look at any straight surface and you'll see that it's just bobbing up and down. Um, from here, you need to basically either jump from the floor. And it, the best way to do that is just simply just mash B until you jump. It's a three frame window to actually jump after you bob up. So you just space jump onto the tube. And then you just bomb jump up. And then the room will be loaded at that point. And then you just do the transition normally, if it'll let me. That might be too, too high up. There we go. And then you just do it normally like so. And that's that. Um, let's not fall backwards. Um, from here, you can traverse this room in two ways. Um, you can either go left, which is faster, but harder, or you can go right, which is slower, but easier. I will just simply show the right method because it is a lot easier. And this is a tutorial, not a how to do this the fastest way possible. I was getting stuck on something because I was moving around and jumping when I shouldn't be. Basically, to go around to the right, all you have to do is just jump backwards like this and then ride the ether all the way around. I'm playing this a little safe because I don't actually go this way in speedruns. So you can probably cut this closer without falling. And from here, um, basically you need to hit the low trigger for this room because it's not loaded. And the low trigger is on this side of the wall. And the easiest way to get to that is to line up around here and then walk forward out of the ether so that you'll land right here. 
and then you want to jump over here, hit the love trigger, and then go this way. The room's loaded. Um, so transition this room. Just get on top of the door like this. Getting out of here can be a little weird sometimes. Um, sometimes you can get like get stuck on top of the door. Where like there's some collision right here, and you can kind of get stuck between this and the frame of the window, of uh, the door. And if you get stuck, you can get basically just morph ball, and then unmorph, and you can kind of wiggle your way in like that. Transition is just go this way like normal. Um, I do this low trigger kind of differently. Not everyone does this. Um, basically. The low trigger is like the earlier room where it's a square poking its corners outside of the sides of the tube. And in order to hit it, you hit those corners that are poking out. But I face this way because whenever you hit the low trigger, this room will just disappear. Like, I'll sh show it now. I was too far back. It's a bit further forward. Like so. See, the room is now unloaded. And now this room is loaded. This next room is a little weird because knowing where to jump to is a little weird because there's a piece of collision right around here. It's kind of hard to tell where it is because the room is not visible. But this collision will kind of block your jump. So you need to make sure to jump in between here and here roughly. Just watch where I jump you'll get a good idea of what I mean. Right here. And this transition is probably the scariest part of the entire thing for newer runners because you need to do this transition but not trigger the Chozo Ghost fight. And the Chozo Ghost fight trigger is like an inch in front of the transition trigger. So I actually came up with a pretty easy way of doing this where you simply get lined up at about here and then hold forward and hold upright a tiny, tiny, tiny bit so that you will basically be moving forward but sliding to the right. And this lets you very carefully time it so that you will hit the low trigger, rather the transition trigger first, and avoid the Chozo Ghost trigger. Because basically hitting the Chozo Ghost trigger usually happens whenever you rush this and don't really know what you're doing. So as you can see, I'm kind of sliding to the right. Then I'll pop forward hit the, and then hit the transition. From here, stop. Let go of the joystick. From here, you will want to jump back left out of that little niche you're in. And then you want to jump here onto this little rock. Um, this is not a precise jump at all. It, you can even miss it and still be fine because the collision for this floor extends way far out of bounds. You can see, you see my power beam shots hitting air right now. So if you just kind of land on the floor here, just jump up here. This wall is also a little weird in that you can um, get stuck on it in a weird way. Um, I don't really know what causes it, but I think it has to do with hitting the wall at a certain angle or something like that. But basically, if you get stuck in it, you can actually keep jumping, but you can't move um, left or right or anything like that. Um, the way to fix this, the easiest way to fix it is simply just morph and then quickly unmorph, and you'll be out of the wall and you'll be able to move again. From here, you will want to jump onto that peg that's on the wall right there. Um, the collision for it's a little weird because it's not perfectly flat, but it's not too bad to jump onto. So you just want to jump onto here. And then from here, you'll kind of want to do like an L jump forward, but also kind of forward right a bit. And then you want to let go of L to, relo to readjust where you're facing. And then you want to hold L again to regain control of where you're going. I'll show it right now. Like that. You could, you could kind of see how I let go of L for a split second to readjust my camera and then hit L again to regain control of where I'm going. Um, that jump is harder than it looks. Um, I'll show an alternative when I show the Chozo Ghost. How to avoid the Chozo. What to do if you trigger the Chozo Ghost, that is. Um, from here, the door opens at the end of the wall. Once you get this, you're done. Basically, you want to jump towards the door and then shoot the door as you're approaching it so that the room loads around you. This is really easy, but it's easy to mess up as well because something missing the door and you're done or shooting it too early or too late and you're done because the room 
doesn't load instantly, but it loads close to instantly, so to the point where it might as well be instant. Um, basically, it's, I basically explained as much as there is to be explained, so I'll just show it like that. Um, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and explain what to do if you trigger the ghost fight on accident in Hall of the Elders. Um, first of all, the way you know you triggered the ghost fight is um, whether or not this that lock comes on the door. That just, actually that shows how close it is. I just barely moved the time it forward of where the transition was. Well, if you triggered the ghost fight, um, you basically scale through in the exact same way. The only thing that changes is the actual door warp at the end. Um, while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and show the easier way of doing of doing this jumps instead of the one one I showed in the main video. Um, and basically, you'll just jump and then jump here. There's a standable spot right here that you can jump to, and then you can just jump from here to in here. Um, basically what you do is, since this door is locked, um, your shots are going to so you can't really shoot the door normally. And for some reason, the door kind of, or rather, rather the room kind of loads a bit differently since you're shooting it before you jump at it. Um, what you need to do is you basically need to shoot like the bottom of the door so you can actually hit it. And you need to like approach the room from the side. And hopefully it won't mess this up. Like so. And then just transition and you're done. Basically, from here, you will want to make sure that you're transitioned to this room. Because you don't always transition by jumping to the door. Um, so this is just make sure you to walk where the door was. And you'll be fine. From here, I typically morph ball through this room. But it typically doesn't matter because you'll be the load trigger anyway. You'll beat the load, rather, anyway. So you just do what's comfortable for you. Um, from here, you'll want to do a ghetto jump off this toad. The spines on its back have collision, and they're curved, meaning you can get a ghetto jump off of them. So you just want to do a ghetto jump left, and then jump forward from there. It's a very easy ghetto jump. It's kind of hard to mess up. And then you just shoot this door, and you're at ice beam. Yay, you're a dirty cheater. And this is the Ice Beam Before Flogger Wallcrawl tutorial. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this was helpful for you.